Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me, James. Hope you guys are all doing well. And this is the Scorched Earth Explorer Note read through. Scorched Earth is a continuation of what happened on the island. And yesterday we started this little mini series with the accounts of Helena Walker and the first notes from one to 15. So if you haven't seen that, go back and check that one out. Before we continue, I'd just like to say I've made a Twitter account. So if you'd like to keep up with more news on the channel, then please follow me there. When we left Helena in the notes yesterday, a hunting party had spotted a giant swarm of mantises heading in the direction of the village that she was staying at. So we're going to continue with notes 16 to 30, the accounts of Helena Walker on Scorched Earth. My hopes the mantises would ignore the village were unfounded and I think we were all wondering if this morning's sunrise would be our last. Despite all my practice, my rifle felt heavy and foreign in my shaking hands as the swarm advanced. Fortunately, they weren't our only visitors. The villagers erupted in cheers as lightning and fire tore through the advancing insects from above. Some chanted a name, Wally al Aswad. The rider, still hidden behind black robes, didn't acknowledge the ovation. With swift efficiency, their small flight of wyverns decimated the mantis swarm and made for the horizon. Wally al Aswad, I need to meet this person, if only to thank them. Just who or what Wally Aswad is depends on who you ask. Some of the villagers have attached religious connotations to the figure, believing it to be some sort of heavenly guardian who appears to the worthy in their time of need. One villager is even convinced Wally is an extraterrestrial. I don't deal in beliefs, I deal in empirical evidence. And that means nothing about Wally is certain until I can meet them. I won't forget this villager's kindness, especially after granting me a Morella tops and supplies for my journey. But this is why I'm here, to find answers. I'm definitely more prepared for the desert than before, and better equipped. My Morella tops offering a large mobile supply of water and radar looking out for the weather. The only threat I really have to worry about is major predators, also giant golems. I'm actually impressed with the shape I'm in, if I do say so myself. I think I even saw some ab definition the other day. It took me long enough. I've been living without sweets for ages after all. You'd think I'd get fit much quicker. Great. Now I miss sweets. The things I'd do to taste chocolate again. It took weeks of searching but I finally caught a glimpse of Wally Al Aswad. I knew I was getting close when I found a series of flugerimp formations this morning. And sure enough, I spotted several wyverns later in the afternoon with a lone rider among them. The rider clearly saw me too because soon enough the wyverns were circling overhead. I waved and yelled in greeting, even calling out Mei Yin's name just in case. Yet without so much as a nod, the wyverns regrouped and flew off. Wally's not a social butterfly it seems, but I'm not letting him off the hook that easily. Of course Wally lives on a bloody mountain, of course they do. I saw their wyverns land on the summit yesterday, and they haven't left. This has to be their home. Unfortunately, the paths were too narrow for my Morello tops, so I'll have to leave it behind. It should know to wander off if I don't return for it. Not that I can afford to really worry about it. The climb's doing a fine job of kicking my ass even without distractions. I swear, if I don't have a six pack after climbing a bloody mountain in the desert, I'm going to be awfully cross. I don't know what kind of a reception I expected when I reached the summit, but laughter wasn't one of them. Yet that is exactly what I heard when I finally let myself collapse and started flinging every obstacle I could think of at this damned mountain. The bemused laughter of an old woman. Wally Al Aswad is definitely no guardian angel. She was quick to dismiss those particular rumours with remarks about how the gods have abandoned this wretched place. As long as I avoided that subject though, she welcomed my questions with surprising warmth though often enigmatically. I have a feeling that I need to be patient with her. It turns out that I didn't find Wally Al Aswad. She found me. While the portal I used to get here opened with little fanfare on my end, apparently the other side created quite the spectacle. According to Wally, it was easy for her to spot from atop of her wyvern, and she started trailing me soon afterwards. I guess her timely interventions were no coincidence. She didn't seem very surprised when I told her about the obelisks, their guardians, or even that this desert is actually a space station. 
Either she knows more than she's saying, or experience has grinded the surprise right out of her. I really missed flying. There's no replicating the feeling, and no replacement for seeing a sunrise amongst the clouds. Wally probably started these wyvern riding sessions just to give herself an escape hatch when our conversations got too personal. But I can't say I mind. Despite their appearance, riding a wyvern is just as pleasant as riding an Argentavis. Even without the saddle, by design perhaps. No matter genetically engineered or not, they're magnificent creatures. It is a risky proposition, but I absolutely must observe them in the wild sometime. I can't pass up an opportunity like that. Now that Wally has deemed my riding skills acceptable, she's finally agreed to show me around the region. From what I can gather, Wally has been here a very long time, maybe longer than Rockwell was on the island. She knows the history of every village and ruin. Apparently there was once a great city to the southeast, but it was wiped out at some point. She's still numb on a lot of details, but I'll have to just keep prying. Radar's been helpful in that regard. Wally definitely seems to be in a better mood when the fuzzball's around. That little charm has certainly earned her keep. I'm grateful that Wally allows me the time to study the local wildlife, but I suspect she only does so out of amusement. She always says something like, Why do you spend so much time on these scribbles that no one will read? I never have a good retort. It's true that no one else is ever going to read my dossiers as I have no way to reproduce or distribute them as long as I'm trapped on one of these space stations. When I started them, they were a passion project, created out of my love for nature and its creatures. Now, I guess they're just a part of my identity. Writing them helps remind me who I am. I can't believe it. Wally spotted somebody wandering in the desert the other day, and it turned out to be none other than Edmund Rockwell. I just burst into tears when I recognised him. Apparently, He'd heard that Nerva was holding me captive and sought to negotiate my release. That led him to the cave, and eventually he wound up here. Awfully sweet of him to go through all that trouble for my sake. Strangely, Wally claims that she saw a portal open up far away from her territory shortly before mine did. I guess that was Rockwell's. Though Wally arrived at the scene too late to track him, Rockwell theorised that the portals may have taken us through time as well as space. Considering my present company, I'm inclined to agree with him. Wally has been much quieter since we found Rockwell. I guess she's just letting us catch up. However, she did say something interesting when we were recounting Nerva's ambitions for the island. This place will never allow anyone to master it, she said. When I asked her to explain, she told me that the great city to the southeast was destroyed by the obelisk itself. Now it's conjecture. But interesting to think about, could the creators of these stations be monitoring human behaviour and clipping its wings should the survivors ever band together and fly too close to the sun? If each station represents a different group in a large experiment, resetting human progress would make a lot of sense. It's a bit grim though, isn't it? Yikes. I don't think Rockwell's sleeping much. I awoke last night to find him studying a strange piece of metal by firelight. I guess some tribe gave it to him as a gift, along with a familiar looking artifact. I insisted we show them items to Wally, and she recognised them as the property of the station's lone guardian. With all that she knows, I'm not surprised she's activated the obelisks before. Hell, sounds like the old battle axe has even slain the beast herself. Since we have said guardian's artifact, Wally says we can leave this station at any time. I suppose we may as well. Rockwell's eager to depart, and as much as I like Wally, I've had my fill of sand. The transporter that can take us back to the control station is in the ruins of another city, south of the mountains. Wally believes it was destroyed by the obelisks, just like the city in the southeast. I didn't press her for details. Not that I'd have got any. Wally's more tight-lipped about them ruins than anything. I had to practically beg her to take me to the southeastern city, and while we were there, she spent most of her time gazing out into the distance. No sense in bringing the mood down with that rubbish now. After all that she's done for me, I'd like to give her a nice, proper farewell. Having seen us through the ruins and safely to the platform, Wally has taken her leave. After doing so much for me, I was sad to see her go, but at least I got to see her smile before she left. Well, me and Radar. I can't very well take the little critter with me, so I officially gave Wally ownership of her. They'll be good for each other, I think. Gah. 
I wrote Wally up there twice. I suppose old habits die hard. But it's not really her name, is it? I always knew that was the case. But she'd never told me to call her anything else. At least not until now. Well, at any rate, cheers, Rhea. It was a pleasure to have known you. So that concludes the Explorer Notes from Helena Walker on the Scorched Earth map. And we will be continuing the Explorer Notes this time tomorrow night. We're going to be looking at our first part of Sir Edmund Rockwell's account of the Explorer Notes on Scorched Earth. As we keep the ball rolling throughout December as I try to get as much content out for you guys as possible. Don't forget, if you're new here, subscribe for more ARC content from myself. And until this time tomorrow, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see ya.